Shabbat Shalom. This is Amina Kazak, and I had some scriptures out of the Complete Jewish Bible I want to share with you. Um, the first uh, section, they all go together. So, in the first is the Asha, Yehu, Isaiah. Um, in chapter 29 and verse 10, it says this. For I nigh has poured over you a spirit of lethargy, for he has closed your eyes, that is the prophets, and covered your heads, that is the seers. For this whole prophetic vision has become like the message in a sealed up scroll. When one gives it to someone who can read and says, please read this, he answers, I can't because it's sealed. If the scroll is given to someone who can't read with the request, please read this, he says, I can't read. Then I did I said, because these people approach me with empty words and the honor they bestow on me is mere lip service. Well, in fact, they have distanced their hearts from me, and their fear of me is just a myth of human origin. Therefore, I will have to keep shocking these people with astounding and amazing things until the wisdom of their wise ones vanishes, and the discernment of the discerning ones is hidden away. That's Pretty heavy right there if you think about uh, what I and I said there. A <laughs> um, couple other places in the Bible that talks about the same sort of thing here. Um, in, uh, oh boy, let's see. In, um, oh, Matty Yahoo and Matthew. Uh, chapter 13 uh, and verse 13. Here is why, and this is uh, Yeshua speaking, uh, Jesus. Here is why I speak to them in parables. They look without seeing and listen without hearing or understanding. That is, in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Yahshua Yahu, which says, You will keep on hearing, but never understand. And keep on seeing, but never perceive. Because the heart of this people has become dull. With their ears they barely hear, and their eyes have closed. So as to not see with their eyes understand with their heart and do to Shiva so that I can heal them. Uh, in Matthew 15, um, it states, Yasha Yahu 15, uh, 6, 7, excuse me. Yasha Yahu was right when he prophesied about you. Once again, another prophecy from Yasha Yahu stating this. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is useless because they teach man-made rules as if they were doctrines. And, boy, let me tell you, uh, I've always really had a huge problem with um, the man-made rules and the doctrines and the special... Um, additions to Bibles and things that have nothing to do with the Word of God. Um, I guess I've often been one to get up and leave churches so that I don't say something uh, that would be disrespectful. Uh, for example, I'm going to give you one. Two, actually. <laughs> uh, so many years ago, um, I was involved in, in a Nazareth church, and I didn't, um, I was singing special music, I was singing English and Spanish, the Via Dolorosa, 
and some things had occurred there and um, in the church. So because of what I had found out, I went to the district office and said, um, you have false witnesses in your church and this is all false doctrines. And so resign me from your Nazarene district as I don't want to be a part of the club. And so um, I guess the church got shut down and at a later time I had left town. I kind of made my point uh, very clear. Um, in any case, I was back in North Carolina and here, here I am a couple of years ago, Easter Sunday service. Uh, some nice gentleman, his wife from Walmart, invited me to go. So I thought, okay, fine, I'll go. So the first thing that the pastor is going to say is we are not going to be doing any kind of pagan rituals in here. This is all about the celebration and the realization of the crucifixion of our Savior Jesus Christ and the ascension to heaven and everything else, the resurrection. Um, Great. So I go into the bathroom to use the restroom and look at the bulletin. And what is it going to say? At the end of church, for all those who would like to stay afterwards and do the Easter, uh, you know, egg hunting, they would start that at 1 p.m. I was so upset because he made the point to say, we're not doing anything like that. But yet, then again, they did. So I just refrained from my opinion and left, as I do many churches. I um, I try anymore unless it's there's any kind of um, six, you know, spiritual stuff going on to stay in the back so I can just observe what these different churches do uh um but in any case i've been doing it for years around the world <laughs> um i find it very interesting and so there's that and i just wanted to share a couple more things with you is this um in matthew 22 chapter 22 um in verse 36 uh Okay, the question was asked to Jesus Christ, Rabbi, which of the mitzvot in the Torah is the most important? He told him, you are to love Adonai, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. This is the greatest and most important mitzvot, mitzvah, excuse me. And a second is similar to it. You are to love your neighbor as yourself. All of the Torah and the prophets are dependent on these two mitzvot. So I had wondered uh, way back in 2004 when I had printed this, not a complete Jewish Bible, it was either King James or NIV or something. Um, I printed this out in big large letters and i was sure that i that everybody in the world needs to get a copy of them um because i love doing stuff like that anyways but it, it's a good memory for me i enjoyed it very much so for god's honor and glory and power um last thing on here i wanted to talk about is in matthew 23 so then in verse uh, 38 states look God is abandoning your house to you, leaving it desolate. For I tell you from now on, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of I and I. And it's very clear, folks, uh, believers, right here, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of I and I. He is coming soon. Uh, blessed is he that comes in the name of Yahweh, in the name of Isaiah. Uh, in chapter 24 here in Matty Hill, um, this is kind of encouraging, really. Uh, just this little part here talks about, you know, 
Um, they were sitting, Yeshua was there, left the temple, and was going away. His Talmudim came and called his attention to its buildings. And but he answered them, you see all these? Yes, I tell you that they will be totally destroyed. And not a single stone will be left standing. When sitting on the Mount of Olives, the Talmudim came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that you are coming? It's right here in chapter 24 in Matthew or Matthew. What will be the sign of your coming is the Lam Hazah in this is any. Yeshua replied, watch out. Don't let anyone fool you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah. And, and they will lead many astray. You will hear the noise of wars nearby and the news of wars far off. See to it that you don't become frightened. Such things must happen, but the end is yet to come. For peoples will fight each other, nations will fight each other, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various parts of the world. All this is but the beginning of the birth pains. At that time, you will be arrested and hand over to be punished, uh, punished and put to death, and all peoples will hate you because of me. Uh, at that time, many will be trapped and betrayed and hating each other. Many false prophets will appear and fool many people, and many people's love will grow cold because of the increased distance from Torah. But listen to this verse clearly in uh, chapter 24, verse 13. I circle this. But whoever holds on till the end will be delivered. Yes. And this good news about the kingdom being announced throughout the world, whole world as a witness to the Goyim, is then that the end will come. And it goes down in chapter, uh, cha the same chapter 24, verse 21, it says, I'll finish it off with this. For there will be trouble then, Worse than there ever has been from the beginning of the world until now. So there's the warning. There will never be nothing like it again. Indeed, if the length of time of this time had not been limited, no one would survive. But for the sake of those who have been chosen, its length will be limited. So we have to, what message I'm trying to get across, we must endure. We must be patient. We must be steadfast. We must be absolutely, uh, you know, in the race and standing for our faith. Um, and so, anyways, uh, until next time, Shabbat Shalom.